uh, Jared Ariel. For all the members of our graduating senior class, uh, and he's Joe Jackson is graduating too, but you probably can't see this in the back. All of our graduating seniors will be getting a montage. Uh, this is a, pic a picture of everybody that was in the marching band this year. Very, very artistically arranged by Joe Jackson. Um, Miss Gillis said earlier how much we're going to miss Joe and, and this type of work, especially if you saw the football program this year. <laughs> <laughs> there was a slight difference in the quality of the band picture section and the football picture section. <laughs> just a slight difference. It was, just, it was minimal. <laughs> but Joe is responsible for this and we thank him for doing this. <laughs> for Jared. <laughs> Man, are we going to miss you. Jared has, for the past four years, been such a workhorse. He, um, we ask him every year to play for the, the musicals. He's been drum captain. Every chance he gets to play, he does, particularly with the musicals. One of the things that, that just really jumps out is what a fast learner he, was, he is and what an instinctive percussionist he is. For those of you that don't know, for the, the musicals every year, the pit orchestra rehearses minimally. Wouldn't you say, guys? Minimally. And so the kids that are playing in that and are playing you know, Broadway-level literature really have to be fast. They have to learn fast, they have to take directions fast, and they have to remember things. It makes it a lot easier when you have a kid like Jerry that you have to tell him to do something once, and he does it, and he remembers it, and he does it flawlessly. It's just been so wonderful to see you develop musically. And also, when Jerry first started playing the tenor drums, and the tenor drums are the drums that they're, they're flat, there's five of them, and they're as heavy as a bass drum, but they're so much more awkward because the center of gravity is, is, is further out from your body. And Jared was somewhat smaller than he is now <laughs> <laughs> when he first started playing them. And there were other people on the drum line that year that complained about aches and pains and complained about various and sundry things. But this small kid was, was, was mighty of spirit, and he never complained. And his back ached the first day or two or three or ten. But every day it ached a little less. And if you can continue with that kind of determination, you're going to be very, very successful. Kelly Carter. freshman year, wasn't it? Yeah. I've never seen anybody almost, well actually not almost, go catatonic and recover that quickly. She was standing on the football field, it was the day of marching band competition, I think, or it was the day of a performance, and all of a sudden she goes completely rigid and falls. And she says, I think I'm going blind. And so we pick her up and she's stiff as a board. It was like magic. We set her down on the bleachers and she went, okay, okay, all right. It's like, that's, that's not, what? How did you do that? And, and it just scared me to death. But um, she's always been such a sweet girl um, and a very good player. And it's always just been a joy to be around you, Kelly. Um, where are you going to college? UGA. Where are you going to college? UGA. One more time? UGA. Yeah, just, just wanted to get that. Um, Mr. Palgan, I'll go ahead and tell you that I know you're going to really enjoy writing those checks, right? <laughs> It's been a joy to get there and to see you grow up, Kelly. Um, ben Dawson is not here tonight because he is also, he's attending the Baywise concert. Uh, is Thomas here tonight? I'm sorry. Um, wow. I'll strike.
Mm. Now, where do I start with this one? <laughs> um, Alice and my daughter are very good friends. Um, Alice has been such a such a welcoming person for Fran, and it's been great to see their friendship grow. You know, I feel kind of like substitute dad for a lot of these kids, but with Alice, um, I felt way too much substitute dad when she walked in my office one day with a cup of coffee and my debit card. <laughs> and she said, Here, here's, your, here's your debit card. Why, why do you have my debit card? And she said, Anna gave it to me. And she was wearing a braided pair of shoes and she had a new jacket. And, and it, was just, it was just coffee that apparently my daughter had said, my dad will buy it for you. Um, but you've just been such a joy. She's brilliant. You're going to Georgia Tech? Yes. Going to Georgia Tech. Um, you know, it's just been great. I appreciate it. Everything you've done for, for me and for her family. Um, Josh Gallerstein. In my teaching career, there have been a handful of, of artist level students that I've taught. And in addition to being one of the finest tuba players in the state this year, he's one of the finest graduating tuba players in the country, as is evidenced by the musical opportunities that he had. Um, the schools that he was considering um, are remarkable music schools. I heard him today work on about a 30 minute piece of music for an audition that's coming up. Um, and, and what I think is going to benefit Josh so much as he goes, goes through his musical life is I think he likes to practice. I think he's very diligent about his musicianship. Uh, from the time he came in as a freshman, there were a couple things that he was clearly a lot more advanced than some of the other players in his class, and clearly some things that he needed to work on. And rather than, than kind of sugarcoating the things that I thought he needed to work on, I told him. And what was remarkable is, he actually did it. Um, this year he played, um, he played principal tube, it's one tuba position, but it's a very prestigious tuba position with the All State Senior High Orchestra. He was playing the same group that Scott was in. And it was a remarkable opportunity for him, on top of a lot of other remarkable opportunities. At the University of Georgia Jam Fest, he played in the top honor group there. Um, I know that UGA would really love to have had him, but he's going to, as I said, one of the finest music schools in, in the country. When you get there, you're not going to be top dog. You're going to have to really compete and fight hard. <laughs> The way you do that is to continue what you're doing. You keep your practice ethic the way it is, and it's going to be very successful for you. Haley Gillespie. I've seen a young lady gain more confidence in the last four years than Haley has. Um, when she came into the band, I think that, you know, just the normal apprehension of high school was extreme. And I think that there are probably a lot of people that I could say the same thing about, but I think as Haley goes through life and she thinks back on her high school band experience, she couldn't think about it any other way. Um, I think that she's made some, some dear and lasting, dear and lasting friendships. <laughs> some very dear and lasting friendships um, that have maintained her in high school and will maintain her over the next several years. Kelly is going to Georgia State, and she's going to be participating. <laughs> Haley, th this this kid. Haley. Um, Haley is going to Georgia State next year, and she will be participating in the Georgia State marching band. So, um, very proud of her for doing that. Taylor Hayes. <laughs> and 
for purely personal reasons, I'm not saying anything nice about Taylor Mason. Next time. <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, Taylor started taking mandolin lessons from Jerry Lanham, who is not only our wonderful percussion instructor, but one of the best all-around musicians I've, I've ever been around. Um, he, is, he is a blessing to all of our students, and up until he started teaching Taylor the mandolin, he was a blessing to all of our percussion students. But as I saw Taylor, I saw his trumpet playing drastically improve. I saw him seek out opportunities to sing in the chorus. I heard him play trumpet with our full orchestra, and I saw him um, really begin to do well on the mandolin. I told him, I said, so, so why exactly aren't you considering music as a career? Because clearly, you have a gift. And he said, well, I don't know. And I told his mom and dad that. Um, I think sophomore year. I said, this kid's really special musically. Um, whatever he's doing, he seems to take to it like a duck to water. And he's just, just a very naturally gifted musician. In addition to that, Taylor's a fine young man. I allow him to date my daughter. <laughs> That's the last I'll say of that. <laughs> Brooke Harper. <laughs> you know, I don't know what those, those little, uh, Carol, you probably do know what those little English Christmas things are called that you pop open and there's a surprise inside. Christmas crackers. Christmas crackers. Well, that makes perfect sense. Uh, <laughs> Christmas crackers. Uh, th that, that's, that's how students like, like Brooke become. Brooke did not join us. Was, this was your first year or second? Yeah. She's senior. This is her first year in the Dunwoody Marching Band. Uh, the last time I remember that happening, uh, you guys may remember, if you remember somebody else, was Anna Maria Tomaszewski. Mm -hmm. That, that participated in, in concert band all three years and was a marvelous player, but just for some reason never, never came to marching band until her senior year, and came to marching band because she was brought to marching band through friendships. She was very good friends with Natalie Beckenbaugh and with um, Becca Helfgott, and I think that that's pretty much why Brooke came to marching band senior year too, <laughs> which is a great reason. Um, it was it was a real joy to see her. her learn music to, and to have as much fun as she did with her friends. So those of you who are rising uh, rising seniors, go recruit somebody because you never know what you're going to get when you crack the thing open. And this year we got, got something wonderful.